Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here. I get this little show on the internet where I uh, fix stuff and I videotape it and bring you along the way. And hopefully you're entertained by this and perhaps you might even learn something. Today we have my 1997 Subaru Legacy. Yay. And the issue that I'm having with the Legacy today is uh, I've got some problems with the front calipers. So in part of this video, I'm gonna show you what I found to be the problem uh, with these calipers. I'll probably just set the replacement on one side because let's face it, it's just a mirror image on the other side, so there's no point in doing both. But uh, I'm just gonna go through the process of, of how I found out that I do have a caliper issue, uh, replacing the front calipers themselves, and also bleeding out the brakes when I'm done. So it should be a lot of fun. Fairly straightforward. So I am just going to lift this vehicle. You've seen me do it plenty of times. And then I'll meet back up with you after I got the front wheels off and uh, we'll get a look at those calipers so that you can see what's going on. Oh, by the way, it's cold today. <laughs> okay, well, as promised, I have uh, lifted the vehicle up, supported it safely, and removed the front wheels. Uh, I'm just gonna work on this left-hand side. It's just easier that way. Um, maybe we'll start with the uh, tools at hand. I have a rag, I have anti-seize, silicone paste. Everybody always asks me where to get this. I'll post a link in the description. Um, got a pair of channel locks. Uh, I've got my ratchet with the 18 millimeter socket. I've got a pair of needle nose vice grips with a couple of pieces of fuel line on the ends to help protect the hose when I pinch it off. I've got an 8 millimeter wrench, a 14 millimeter wrench, a 12 millimeter wrench, and also a 12 14 wrench. Um, also, let's not forget our brake cleaner. All right, well, one of the first things that I'm going to point out that I'm going to recommend you do is to actually uh, turn the key to the unlock position. So let's do that real quick. All right, so what I'll do is I will just take my key, turn it one click up to the unlock position. This way I could turn my steering wheel, but I'm not on, and the ignition and all that stuff's not on. So let's get out of here before the beeping drives me crazy. All right, now that I've, I've done that and I've put the key in that position, I'm now able to like grab the caliper and move in any direction because if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't be able to do this. So now I'll be able to position it in such a way to where I'm able to work on it more easily. So our first step is gonna to be to figure out whether or not uh, the caliper itself needs to be replaced. And this is how I made that determination. I just took this little rubber plug off here. And then uh, these fasteners, I guess I didn't need a 12 millimeter, I just grabbed it, but these are 14. And I'm just gonna undo the bottom one for now. Okay, I'm just set that someplace nice and safe. And because I've done that, I can just flip the whole caliper up like this uh, to be able to work on it. I'm also gonna take those uh, needle nose vice grips with the uh, fuel line and I'm going to crimp off the brake line. Uh, some people might have issue with this, but they actually make tools to do exactly this that have a uh, similar, similar setup to what I have here. And what they're concerned with is that uh, you could collapse the inside of the brake hose doing this. I personally have never experienced that, and I've been doing it this way for a number of years. That's not to say that, you know, it's infallible and it can't happen, but oh, I'm just passing that along before it uh, ends up in the comments. Now that I've taken that, that cover off that bleeder, I'm just going to put my 8 millimeter wrench on there, and then I have my, well, handy soda bottle slash brake be bleeder uh, thing here. This is just a piece of aquarium tubing piece of vacuum line on the end here, and that's pretty much all it is. And I, I make sure that it's uh, buried down inside the brake fluid so that when fluid comes out, it can't suck air back in. Um, pretty simple design, seems to work well. So I'm gonna put this, or try to put this. I do have issues with this sometimes of fitting these smaller bleeders, and that's really not gonna fit too well. So I'm just gonna, I just removed my vacuum line portion just gonna try to take my hose and put it directly onto the bleeder. Okay, I'm happy with that. So now I've got a place for the brake fluid to go instead of on the floor. You can put it on your floor, whatever. Then I'm gonna take these giant channel locks, if you remember these, and I'm going to open up the bleeder valve. Hopefully hook it on something so it stays open. You see a little bit of fluid coming out there now. 
but I'm gonna compress the piston with this. You can use a C-clamp or something else. This is just what I use. Uh, they also have a special tool just for doing this. But I'm gonna reach in. This is the caliper piston here. And I'm gonna squeeze this together. Or at least I'm gonna try to. And to be honest, I'm having quite a bit of difficulty doing this. And this is the problem that I had the other day. This should go in fairly easily. The fact that it's not means that the, the caliper piston inside of here could be binding. I'm going to try it in a couple of different directions. And last but not least, I'll show you one other possibility. And that is that the bleeder valve itself has a restriction. I see these things get rusted up from time to time. So it's, it's entirely possible that it's just a bleeder valve that's the problem. So what I'll do, and I know it's not the brake hose because remember I've got the brake hose pinched off. So what I'll do is I'll just remove the bleeder valve completely and I'll inspect it. And you'll see a little hole that's down in there. That's where the brake fluid initially comes through to work its way through the bleeder valve. So if you're able to like blow through this and the brake fluid comes out the bottom, then this bleeder valve is clear. So it's not an issue with the bleeder valve because what you'll find if this is a problem is you'll see that hole might be all rusted up. And I usually just take it over to the wire wheel and clean it up. And then uh, in addition to that, what I'll do is I'll take like a metal pick or something and pick out any debris that's in there and then I'll blow through it with an air hose to, to clean it out. So don't condemn a caliper just because of a possible bad bleeder valve is the reason why I'm going through the, all this. But um, now that that's out, you can see I, I still get some fluid flow, but it's still, it should be squirting out right now, and it's not. So that tells me that this caliper is pretty much in need of replacement. And with, uh, with my front brakes especially, I want to make sure that they're as good as they can be. So we are going to make ourselves a video on replacing this caliper. Um, one more thing to note before I, well, turn it the right way, Eric. One more thing to note before I get too deep into this is that in addition to the piston itself um, being bound up inside the bore, there's also these slide pins that can get stuck or frozen that can cause the caliper not to move. So if you have like say, this is what you're looking for. If, if you brake, if, if while you're driving down the road and you brake and it pulls to one side, that's a good indication that you may have a caliper problem. It could be some other problem, but it, it could be a caliper problem. And what that would mean is like, say for instance, it pulled to the right, that's actually the caliper that's working. So I would be looking at the left caliper in that situation. And just the opposite if it would pull to the left. If it pulled to the left, I'd be looking at the right caliper. But another thing that could cause a caliper not to work are these slides. And periodically I recommend going through and adding some lubrication to that, the same silicone paste. It does not have to be 3M, but uh, I don't use grease to lubricate these. And the reason I say that is because these rubber boots are made of a petroleum product. Grease is also a petroleum product. The two things get together and the grease will actually eat away at this rubber. And as a result, what happens is, is it will cause this pin to bind in its bore. And then once you've got grease in there, it's a pain to get it out. But that's what you have to do if you end up with grease in here. So I, I get this a lot. This is the reason why I'm going through so much trouble in mentioning all this. All right, I've got another little FYI for you as far as uh, checking out to see if, if your caliper is bad. You see how I've got that uneven wear? Like one pad is worn a whole bunch and the other one isn't worn so much. And also look at the other side. The other side, the brake pads are worn a lot more than this side. So if you see something like that, the first thing I go for is the caliper slides and make sure that those are moving like they're supposed to. And if they're not, lubricate them with silicone paste. Um, but if they are moving okay, the next thing I do is I check the piston to make sure that that's doing what it's supposed to. And uh, normally what I find is it's the piston when it comes down to that. But it could just as easily be the, um, the uh, caliper slides. And one last thing to note is if you do have an issue like this or, or it looks like this is... Uh, these are worn down more than one side than the other. Another possibility is that the brake hose has failed. Okay, so how you would check for that is you would get inside the car, you would pump the brakes a bunch of times, and then go out and crack the bleeder. If you see fluid squirting out, 
then it's quite possible you've got a bad brake hose. But if the fluid does not squirt out under pressure, then you're probably okay. But that's, that's how I do a check for uh, a brake hose problem. Moving on. <laughs> Shut up, Eric, and do something. All right, well, this is what we're gonna do. I'm just going to slide that caliper out. My brake pads are, and, and you can see that I've got a little bit of a, a crack there from some overheating, like it, it might have been bound up. So I do have plenty of brake pad left here, but I'm gonna replace these anyway. I'm also gonna replace the rotors. You know what, I'm, I'm in here, why not just do it all? Before I get too far, I'm gonna disconnect my brake hose. My brake hose is here, and I believe that's my 12. It is. So 12 millimeter on this. So there's, this right here is the banjo bolt that goes inside of there. And, and once I get that out of there, you'll see why they call it a banjo bolt. But uh, we are going to remove that. All right, let's do it. And you could put like a drain pan or something underneath here to, to clean up the drippings, because there will be some. There'll be some residual that's left over inside the caliper. But the replacement of the caliper isn't that difficult. It's making sure that you actually need a caliper and you're gonna spend that kind of money that, that does make a difference. Okay, remember I called this a banjo bolt? Well, it's got that hole in there with a fluid that can go into it and it can come out here. So fluid can flow through this. And this is the part that is the banjo fitting. It's got the same kind of hole through it, that kind of thing. I hope that information is useful to you. So now we're completely disconnected and we can just let things just sort of hang there. Now these have washers and I've talked about this in other caliper videos. I'm not a fan of the copper washers that they give you uh, sometimes with calipers, but if they are the uh, steel type, I say go for it and use those steel types. Replace them. All right, now we've got the main portion of our caliper removed. I'm just gonna set that aside for now. And there's just two more fasteners. These are 18 millimeter. I'll give you a closer look of those. Okay, in here you have two fasteners, one there at the top and the bottom. These are both 18 millimeter uh, head fasteners. I'm gonna be removing those next. Well, maybe these are actually 17 because it's fitting kind of sloppy. Yeah, these are actually 17s. I'm gonna tighten this up just a little bit because I've seen quite a bit of drippage coming out of here. The idea is to lose as little fluid as possible. That will make bleeding the brakes easier when you're done. Okay, I'm back with a 17. Looks like this strut bolt is gonna give me some trouble. So I brought along a wrench just in case. With rusty stuff, make sure you're all the way on the fastener. And I like long wrenches. They really help with leverage, as you can see. No problem busting that loose. I'm gonna do the same to the bottom one while I'm here. Instead of hitting on my wrench, I'm gonna hit on my ratchet. It's got a soft end on it. Personally, with rusty fasteners, I prefer that impacting motion, but I've also had people make comments that that's a bad thing to do because it can cause damage and carpal tunnel and those kind of things. So, weigh the risk, make your own choice. Notice I knocked them both loose first. If you do this top one and take it all the way out and then you go to do this bottom one, this whole assembly will flop back like this. It's a pain in the butt. The opposite is true for the other side. All right, looks like my bolt is somewhat rusted in place. Not uncommon for a vehicle this age in this neck of the woods. Rust is just part of life, especially on one that's as well taken care of as this Subaru was. All right, there's a caliper bracket, so I can just set that aside also for now. Um, you want to be careful with these parts because these are uh, cores and um, you want to be sure that uh, they accept your cores, because if they don't, ooh, it's a problem. All right, I can just remove the rotor now by pulling it off. There's no screws or anything that hold this on. You see my ABS 
tone ring here. Want to be real careful of that. Any damage to this could actually cause an ABS light to come on. So we'll just be careful there. Okay, now I've brought our parts over to the bench. You can get a little bit better look at my rusty caliper that I just dump brake fluid all over the floor and the bench with. Uh, they can be really particular about your, your core returns, so just make sure that you, you've got everything that you need here. And I'm just going to insert that pin back in. I'm also going to take the bolt, but before I take this bolt, I'm going to take my new caliper. I'm going to make sure that it's the same size, because make sure that this is also 14 millimeter. Sometimes they change the size on these. And sometimes they're all over the place. So sometimes they're 12, sometimes they're 14, or what have you. And if, if you're doing a brake job and you want to just take one set of tools and be done with it, well, now's a good time to make sure that you uh, can do that because uh, the uh, caliper remanufacturers just don't care. They just grab what's in the box, I think. Um, so if you, uh, it's not a problem to take your old fasteners and swap them over to the new caliper so long as you take those fasteners and you put them over on this. That way the thing is complete. They want to make sure that your core is complete. Now, these are those dreaded copper washers that I personally do not like. However, my other caliper came with the steel washers that I do like. So I'm going to be using these. And then another thing I do to uh, make it nice for my parts guy so I'll take the plug out of the new caliper, I'll put it into the new one, and also install my bolt. I'm not going to tighten it, I'm just going to keep it like that. Now, the shims, your new caliper may not come with shims, mine did. So we'll be able to install brand new shims and I really like that. So we're good there. So I can take that, set it aside, get it ready to go back to uh, rebuild land. But uh, before I put this on the car, see yeah I want to knock this one loose um, so that oh it already is kind of loose so that it's easy to install because I'm going to install the bracket and then the actual caliper and I can do the exact same thing I can just pivot the bracket up and then pull it off of the one pin look at that it's lubricated with silicone not grease it better be lubricated with silicone I'm pretty sure it is I'm going to add a little my, more of my own just to make sure that's a good thing. And also it looks like it's coming with a new banjo bolt. That's actually, actually kind of kind of nice. Oh, and new indicators. That's good because I didn't have indicators on my old brake pads. Let's face it, the install is going to be pretty much the reverse of removal. Uh, there's one exception. I am installing new rotors here, uh, but uh, they have a, a coating on them you may or may not be able to see there. That coating is called Cosmoline. It's a rust inhibitor. It keeps these things from rusting in the box before you get them. Uh, I just take a little bit of brake clean and a clean rag. This crosshatch pattern is nice. It helps the pads seat in. It's not often, it's not really necessary, but it, it, it is nice. You don't have to get the Cosmoline off the hat, just the uh, actual rotor itself. And <laughs> put the rotor on first. Don't try to put the caliper bracket on first. That would not work out. Now to make things easier, I'm going to install my shims now. Rather than, I, I could do it while it's already on, it doesn't really matter. But the shims follow the contours of the caliper. So I just take, and these, these aren't like, there isn't a top and a bottom to this. They're just, they just are. So put those on, flip it around. There, my shims are now installed. Slide the bracket in place. Let's find my two caliper bolts. Uh, some of you may, might be wanting to put anti-seize on these. I, you know, something like brakes really wasn't meant to have like lubricants on this stuff. So I, I'm not saying you can't do what you want because you're gonna anyway. But I don't do anything. If anything, what I should be doing here is I should get off my lazy butt and go get my oil can and put a couple of drops of oil on these. That would be like a good thing. 
Now I'm going to show you something else that you shouldn't do is use a tool that you're not supposed to use as a hammer. <laughs> but once again, it's, it's handy and I'm here. Don't ever think that Eric the car guy is perfect, because I'm not. All you got to do is read through the comments and find out how imperfect I am. Same drill here. I want to make sure that both my fasteners are started and well established before I tighten anything all the way down. Because what may seem like it's grabbing threads may not be grabbing threads. Also cross threading is, a, is an issue if you tighten one down before the other. There is a torque spec for this, I'm sure, but I'm gonna put it about here. And same with this. And keep in mind, these are my long wrenches, so they, uh... All right, Eric, make sure you're turning it the right way. <laughs> uh... Yeah, that's the right way. I get confused sometimes, especially when it's on the other side. All right, rotors in place, caliper brackets in place. Let's uh, install some brake pads and lubricate some brake pins. Now that we're here, I'm gonna take that same clean rag I had. I'm gonna pull out the pins. And actually these are perfectly lubricated with silicone paste. So that, it's not grease, it's silicone. So even at the caliper remanufacturer, they know to use silicone here. So please, please, please use it. And uh, invariably, whenever I say that, somebody's gonna come out and say, well, can I use grease? No, don't use grease. I'm now going to install my brake pads. And since this came with a new wear indicator, I'm going to place that um, on the leading edge. So as this, as this wheel rotates, I'm on the left-hand side now, that makes the bottom side of the inside pad the leading edge. And that's, that's where I, I personally, I always place my wear indicators. This, this is the thing that makes noise when your brakes wear out. So it sticks down just a little bit further so that as that brake pad gets down to that point, that wear indicator is going to start to make contact with the rotor and make a heck of a racket so that you uh, take a look at your brakes. Now before I put any lubricants on this, I'm going to slide this in here to see if that will even fly because with this brake shim, new brake shim in place, it might not, it might cause a problem. I am running into some difficulty. Ah, you know what? I just noticed something. See this little area on the pad? That's where the wear indicator goes. I'm sticking it right in there. Yeah. Because guess what? That spot was made for it. <laughs> so look look for that on the brake pads. So somebody already did that and they they've got them on both sides. So that's that's where the indicator is gonna rest. Now let's see how it goes in. I'm trying to figure out what exactly it is that's giving me trouble here. Looks like it's making contact with the inside of the caliper bracket a little bit. It's nothing with my uh, indicator or anything, but it, you can see where the brake pad is actually making contact with the with the caliper. I don't know if that's the caliper or the brake pads. Both are quote unquote quality parts. Well, I suppose we could determine if, the if it's the brake pads by slipping in one of the old brake pads right now. This is the one that used to live back there. And that went right in. That went right in like it's supposed to. And I can see how that new brake pad has that difference. So that's how you find out if you got an issue there or not. So I need to get a different set of brake pads. I'll be back. And we're back. I have the new set of brake pads, which I've compared to the old set of brake pads, and I know that they are correct. So I'm now gonna install these, but before I do, I'm gonna take the anti-seize that I showed you earlier in the program and just touch a little bit on where the uh, brake pad makes contact with the caliper itself. And I'm not putting a great deal on this. I'm just putting enough just to 
give a slight coating. With stuff like this, if you put too much and contaminate the actual friction material, you're, you're kind of taking a step backwards, so um, you want to uh, try and avoid that. All right, the bottom one was perfect. My upper pin, however, um, could use just a little bit more. Once again, I'm going with the silicone paste here. And then I can just take the caliper, slide it right in, and make sure it goes over the top. And something I get asked about a lot is you might get like a little air bubble in here. Just pinch it to sort of burp it when you push it in because that little air bubble can actually cause enough tension on the caliper to, to cause uneven pad wear. Believe it or not, seeing that. So, cycle it down. It's again, this is a 14. And I'm sure that the astute viewer will notice that the new brake pads already had the uh, indicators installed. So now I'm gonna bring my brake line down. Real important you don't get this twisted. It's got lines on it. So just make sure that those lines don't, aren't twisted around when you do this. You don't wanna twist the brake hose. And as I stated, I'm gonna install my new washers on my new banjo bolt. One on each side of the brake hose. And just thread it into place. Being very, careful not to cross thread this guy. You cross thread this, it's pretty much game over. Oh, <laughs> remember how I told you to use different sizes? Well, that's kind of what they did to me here. And because of that, I am quite literally gonna switch back. I went and got my old bolt. Now, the old washer's still on here, so I'm just gonna take my pocket screwdriver and just sort of slip it in between and knock that loose to get that off of there. Old bolt, new washers, I don't have a problem with that. New bolt, different size than the old one, like some goofy size. I'm not really, I don't like that. You can do what you like, but I'm not going there. Same deal. One washer on the inside, one washer on the other side, sort of sandwiched into place. Thread pitch, everything's the same. It's just the head of the fastener that's different. Don't go so tight you strip it out. Go tight and snug. And actually once everything's all said and done, I want you to go back and check it for leaks. Now I can remove my, um, vice grips here and what I'll do while I go and do the other side is I'll just crack the bleeder and let it sit. I got a couple of rags underneath here that I'm using to catch my brake fluid but I'll just let that sit and do what's called gravity bleed. What will happen is the fluid will come down through the hose, fill up the piston chamber and start dripping out there. I'll tighten it up and I'll have that much less to bleed when I go and do the final bleed on the system. All right, you can see we got some drippage going on. Let's seal that back up. And we can begin to bleed the air. All right, now here's a piece of inside information that uh, actually I probably should have showed you before I put the brake pads on. But on some vehicles, you'll notice that the rotor is held down by screws. And this keeps it centered onto the hub and keeps it from flopping around like this. And basically makes the installation of the caliper and pads a lot easier. Now when you go to bleed the brakes without the wheels on, it's going to flop around. Well, I should say that, that those screws really mean nothing once you bolt the wheel on. It's not like the rotor's going to go anywhere. But as far as assembly goes, it can make it somewhat cumbersome. Well, in order to uh, work with this and prevent this, an old axle nut. You can just put right on the rotor. And that just sort of holds everything in place and holds it steady. I'm also going to put one on the other side. This way, the rotor and everything is centered, so when I go to bleed the brakes, I won't get a mushy pedal feel. You might get a mushy pedal because the caliper and everything and the rotor assembly are moving around a little too much. So this, this will help prevent that. 
I'm guessing what might come next is Eric. Since I bled out the, or, or since I did the front calipers, do I have to bleed all four wheels? No, you do not. Uh, you do have to before you start anything. Top off the master cylinder because if you run the master cylinder dry, you will have to bleed all four wheels, and you don't want to have to do that. I'm also going to push my little thing down in there, get it all seated. All right, now be careful because brake fluid eats through paint, so try to keep it away from the paint. But come on, this is my '97 Subaru. Give me a break. Okay, before I even open the bleeders, um, now, now that I have them gravity bled, I'm gonna basically seat the caliper onto the pads. There's good, there's gonna be a little bit of extra space between the caliper and the pads now that uh, they're new. So I wanna make sure that that piston moves out enough to make contact with the pads, and how I'll do that is I'll pump the brakes a few times. This also makes it so the air is pretty much ready to come out of the system. So it puts it in a better place. So I'll pump the brakes a few times, until I begin to feel something on the pedal, some resistance, like I am right there. And that'll mean that my, in fact, that feels pretty good right as it is. And uh, that way when I go to bleed everything out, I'm, I'm sort of ahead of the game. Now many people are gonna say they wanna start furthest from the master to begin the bleeding procedure. And I'm not gonna say that's wrong. Um, it's just not how I do it. I'm just gonna start here at the uh, same caliper, the left front caliper. I'm gonna bleed it out and I'm gonna move over to the right side. Once again, you don't have to bleed all four wheels unless you run the master cylinder dry. Uh, fits on there a lot nicer. And because I have this tube here that's sitting down inside of liquid, it can't really draw air back up in. Um, I'm not gonna let it sit there for a long period of time, but this way the air is forced out through the fluid, but when it tries to come back in, it's gonna draw fluid, it's not gonna draw air. So, I, I like using this method, method, especially when I'm by myself. And I'm just gonna pump the brakes a few times until I see it come out without any air. As you can see, it didn't take much because we gravity bled it. I'm gonna cut it off. And I didn't see any air, so I'm actually gonna call this side done. And move to the other side. I like to make sure that these get back on because once they get corroded down inside, remember I told you about that thing about the bleeders that um, can cause it not to bleed properly? Well, a lot of times you'll find that that rubber cap is missing when that happens. Okay, I can't stress enough how letting the master cylinder run dry is not a good thing. But I can actually top this off now because I'm finished with my bleeding procedure. I'm gonna pump up the brakes a few times, check it over, see if I see any leaks, particularly around those banjo fittings and those washers. If I do, I uh, will replace those washers and recheck and obviously re-bleed the system. Now once you're done bleeding both sides, uh, Start the engine up and feel how the brake pedal feels because it might feel a little bit different. But also I'm going to post a link to my spongy brake pedal video so that may also help. Just feel the brake pedal. Feels good. Okay, caliper replacement on the 1997 uh, Subaru Legacy. I know I've done caliper replacement videos in the past, but each and every time I do one of these, I try to address a lot of the comments that are made to previous videos. Uh, it's sort of almost an opportunity to make an RE video. Uh, also, there's some vehicle specific things that come up, but in general, I think at this point, if you've watched all these videos that I've made, you see sort of a pattern. And that's just what I follow. That's a, that's a method that, that I use. I'm not saying you have to use that. You may do something completely different. In fact, feel free to let me know in the comments if you like, or there'll be a link in the description to a discussion about this video over at my forum. But the idea is you want to make sure you lose all the air. You want to make sure you diagnose it correctly. 
and, I, and I've tried to incorporate that information into this video. Anyway, I am Eric the Car Guy. You can always find me over at EricTheCarGuy.com, where if you have automotive questions, I would ask that you type in a couple of keywords to my search function. If you don't get an answer when you type in those keywords, I mean, don't type in a whole paragraph, but if you don't get an answer when you type in those keywords, feel free to sign up for our forum. It's free and uh, we'd be more than happy to help you over there. In fact, that's where I go to answer automotive questions, which there are many, but we try. We all, we all try. Google+, Plus, Facebook, Twitter, and I close with be safe, have fun, and of course, stay dirty, people. I will see you next time.